This tree is amazing. It's hollow. Quercus virginiana, live oak. Just a remnant of trees that once filled the sky. That dead tree once stood there and blocked out all the light in that area. That tree succumbed to some kind of natural event. It didn't make it. So now it still stands as a remnant of what used to be. And those habitat snacks are super important. And here's a video that a good friend of mine made that really illustrates how important they are. I think that as a, an arborist especially, we have some moral obligation to do what's best for trees and habitat. And that's part of the reason you become an arborist because you want to learn more about trees. I'm Yuri. I'm the forest entomologist at the University of Florida. And I study habitat snacks. Pieces of dead wood that are left in the landscape. Turns out they are really important. Living trees are great, of course. They're amazing, but living trees are defended. It's full of resin. If you're a little beetle, you try to bore in, you get smothered by the resin. And how much life they actually support? Eh, they're really well defended, so not so much. Dead trees, on the other hand, are undefended. Like this pine is dead. And what I like to say often is, tree really starts living when it dies. It stops being defended by its chemistry. It attracts life. It's like a storage of nutrients. If you look closer, it's full of holes. Every single one of these holes supported a bug and then another bug, and then they support birds and lizards. You know, they are called habitat snags. In the arboriculture industry, they're called woodpecker poles. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Woodpeckers are just one of many animals that depend on dead wood. I always make sure that when I'm getting rid of a tree, I work with my arborist to cut it at the top, remove the top, that's dangerous, but leave the trunk standing. I have many of them made in my yard, and this way I'm maintaining a certain percentage of my trees in this state of semi-dead or dead wood. Yeah, look at this one. This is essentially a statue. It's a living statue that created itself. It's like an art piece. And it's not just bugs and birds. The other reason dead trees are important is that they're turning into soil. They are decomposing and all these living trees around are feeding off of that. That's the kind of time scale that we rarely think about. These living trees around here need that dead tree. If we didn't leave dead wood in our landscapes, we're removing all the nutrients. Dead wood is obviously not producing any oxygen, but you know what it's doing? That's the carbon that we are putting back in the soil. That's the most reliable storage of carbon that we have. Dead wood to the soil. Every one of these allows me to feel like a steward of the land. We all can be stewards of a little piece of land. And together we can make a huge change on a landscape or urban level. So I'm really grateful to work with some really good arborists, colleagues and friends who have the knowledge and the tools to protect and preserve these standing snags or woodpecker poles so I can enjoy the life around them. If you're gonna leave a woodpecker pole, you wanna make sure that it's not within the immediate falling distance of the home of the person that is having you out there doing the work. And safety is our number one concern. It's really our responsibility to give people options. Different options gives them the ability to make their own decision as far as if leaving the habitat is the right choice for them. If they want to leave some habitat or perhaps they don't even consider leaving habitat, then we should relay the different uh, risks associated with the habitat that will be left. I think some people also just go by the advice that tree people 
put out there for people. That's awesome. Yeah. I love how you guys have credibility. Yeah. That's amazing.